Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel Make the Change. And today we are making a change to our format. Today we will be talking about differences between colleges and universities in Canada. And in order to do it, we decided to invite our dear friend, fabulous Yulia from This is Yulia. On her channel, Yulia shares her experience studying and living abroad. She talks about learning different languages and she talks about Canada. She is a dear friend of ours and we are excited and humbled to have this collaboration with her. So in this video we are going to have a small battle between Yulia, who will be representing colleges, and Anastasia, representing universities. Hey guys! My name is Anastasia and I studied computation arts as well as business technology management in Concordia University in Montreal. Hey, this is Ilya and I've studied multimedia at Algonquin College in Ottawa. Education in Canada is most likely different than in your country. So in this video we decided to break down major differences between colleges and universities to help you make a better decision on what type of institution and program makes most sense for you. In order to do the comparison, we can came up with 12 parameters that we think are most important to consider and evaluate before making a decision for your Canadian education journey. And if you're wondering how to optimize for your success while studying in Canada, Yuli and Anastasia made another video about 10 life hacks they wish they knew before they started their education in Canada. Make sure to check it out, link in the description box below. And now let's get started. Let's start with programs. What programs are available to me? Programs at universities have different duration as well as different diplomas you can receive. Education in universities is generally more broad, more theoretical and conceptual than in colleges. And the typical bachelor program at university lasts between three or four years. And if you already have a bachelor's degree, you can apply for a master's degree, which lasts for about two years. And if you already have a master's degree, you can apply for a PhD program and write a thesis, which consists mainly of a research, which may take up to six or maybe even eight years of your studies. Since college education is focused mostly on hands-on experience, the programs are much shorter, meaning you can study for one year, two years, three years. In Canadian colleges, you can find programs like like graduate certificate, which is one year, diploma program, which is two years, advanced diploma, three years, and then a bachelor's degree. If you are a national student who wants to save money, then college is your choice. Next up, entry requirements. So what are the entry requirements? University admissions happen once or twice a year, depending on how popular the program is. And admissions typically happen in January and in September, with September being a much more common month for admissions. In terms of requirements for your admissions, they are very similar to the ones for college. You need to have a high school diploma or any proof of your previous education. I, for instance, used my certificate from my unfinished bachelor's in Russia to apply for university in Canada, and it worked just fine, and I was even able to get some of my subjects that I've taken before counted so that I don't have to take them again. And if you're applying for a much more competitive program or sometimes for an arts degree, you also typically need to provide a portfolio, maybe there's an interview you have to do, or you need to have a recommendation letter written for you. If you're applying for a PhD program or master's, you will certainly need to provide a recommendations letter from your previous employers or your previous professors. You also need to submit the subject of your research and the thesis because you want to make sure that university is actually interested in the kind of research that you want to do. And if English is not your first language, you have to take an English exam like IELTS or any other accredited English exam. And you have to make sure that you pass it with a minimum score. Sometimes some universities can still admit you if your score is not high enough, but they will require you to take some additional English courses in the first year of your studies. Unlike universities, Canadian colleges have three intakes, which are September, January, April or May. September and January are the most popular ones. April, May, not that much. As for entry requirements, it's super easy. All you need is your high school diploma or just a diploma if you're applying for graduate programs, your motivation letter, your portfolio if you're applying for some kind of creative programs like graphic design, 3D animation. If you're going to study business or like marketing, nobody cares about your portfolio because you have literally zero things to put in it. As for English exam, same thing as in universities, IELTS 
TOEFL, Duolingo English test, Cambridge exams. But most of the international students, they would take IELTS exam. Some of the programs might require you to have a higher IELTS, for example, TV broadcasting, journalism, nursing. But also, if your English is not that good, no worries at all. Every college, every university in Canada offers language courses. And should I really pay attention to rankings and prestige of the college or university? Universities in North America are famous for its ranking. The ranking in Canada, ranking in North America, ranking in specific subject of study, and so on and so forth. And the higher the ranking of university, the harder it is to get in because competition is high. So you want to lean very heavily into your portfolio or the interview or the motivation letters that you write. And you need to make sure that your academic achievements are outstanding. And with higher ranking come higher prices for education as well. In my experience, employers don't really care about the ranking of universities. What they care much more more about is what experience you have and what can you contribute to the job that you're applying for. Rankings in Canadian colleges is an interesting thing because it simply does not exist. People ask me, Yulia, which college is the best? But the thing is, college is college. There is no rankings, there is no prestige. College education is mostly focused on you getting the experience. So Canadian colleges are super easy. You pay money, you study. All right, in terms of cost, how much would it cost me? As I mentioned previously, the cost of university studies highly depend on the ranking of that university. But on average, expect to spend around 25,000 Canadian dollars per year on education. And that fee includes your classes, some basic facilities, sometimes some health insurance that university provides that's very basic, and that's it. And on top of that, do expend to spend some money on things like books, and books are pretty expensive in Canada, things like some equipment and supplies, so if you need some cameras, some art supplies for your uh, studies or laptop, those come at extra cost. And sometimes you need some subscriptions to software or some other tools in order to be able to pass a certain class. So do expect to pay for those subscriptions as well. Colleges in Canada are a bit cheaper than universities, meaning you can pay anything from 17,000 per year up to 2022, depending on the program. Yes, you can always find cheaper options, but bear in mind that these cheaper options gonna be somewhere in the middle of nowhere, like in a field, if you wanna live somewhere in a field, I mean, why not? But 17 to 20,000 per year, it's a realistic number. In most of the cases, all the college programs are bring your own equipment, meaning you will need your laptop, but the subscriptions gonna be included in your tuition fees. For example, I studied multimedia, my tuition fees were like 16, 17,000, but I had Adobe subscription, I had Microsoft Office, so all the subscriptions were provided to me so I can study seamlessly. Tuition fees normally include just tuition fees. Sometimes they might include bus passes, they might include insurance. The coolest thing about colleges, what I really like, that you have an equipment rental on campus. Let's say you wanna study photography or videography. Colleges will have those rentals where you can actually go take the cameras and try them. And can I get scholarship to cover the cost of education? Some financial assistance in the form of bursaries or scholarships is available at universities and you have to apply to them on a yearly basis. Different universities have different types of scholarships. I would advise you go on the university's website and check it all out. Examples of scholarships provided by university could be things like women in STEM or maybe working mothers or it could be the most innovative student of the year based on what projects you've submitted this year and so on and so forth. Those scholarships are pretty small. They will never be able to cover the entire cost of your yearly education. It will be somewhere between $500 and maybe three or four thousand dollars depending on the scholarship. So that amount can only barely cover some of your books or maybe some other other life expenses. 
There's also sports scholarships available if you want to join a sports team at university. And there are some federal scholarships available, but you want to make sure that your GPA and your grades are really good for that. Colleges in Canada also have scholarships, but the thing is they would be so much less than in universities. So the maximum amount that you can get from a college would be around 5,000 Canadian dollars. The thing is Canada and different federal institutions give scholarships to graduate students so you will not be able to get scholarships from the country but check your college's scholarship financial aid bursary section because they have a lot of stuff for academic success for some kind of sports stuff just check out the sections you might find something that's gonna work for you as for curriculum what does day-to-day -day learning look like? Bachelor programs consist of major, minor, and elective courses you have to take. Major courses, they have to be taken in a specific order, and they're oftentimes prerequisites to each other. Minor classes is something that you can optionally take if there's something else that you're interested in apart from your major. For instance, if you're majoring in accounting, but very interested in biology, you can take biology as a minor and take about six courses that are dedicated to learning more about biology. And if you're not interested in taking a specific minor, but just want to take whatever classes you want, you can choose electives. It could be any class offered at university. Each class is typically three or six credits, depending on whether you have to take it in one semester or takes two semesters to complete. And generally bachelor programs are somewhere between 90 and 120 credits, which means that you have to take around 30 classes in order to be able to complete your degree. The classes that you'll attend are mainly lectures and are theoretical. And a lot of work is expected to be done by you outside of the class. So there is lots of inclination towards exams, submissions, and group projects that you have to do outside of the class. So there is less focus on attendance of the class and much more focus on the output that you produce. There's also a very big focus on group collaboration. So do expect to do a lot of group projects that will take a lot of your time outside school. And the general rule of thumb at university is for every one credit that you take, you're expected to take at least two hours of homework, which means that each class should take around six hours of out-of-class studies. Curriculum in colleges and universities are a bit different. In universities, you have your own schedule, your own subjects. Basically, you can do whatever you want. In colleges, you have a set list of subjects you need to take. Unfortunately, in my college, I was not able to, you know, pick subjects and be like, hey, I want this subject on Tuesday and then that one on Friday. But I had some electives that were online, so basically I could take them whenever I wanted. But also I had Wednesday off. It was my reading day, so I could go to library, I could meet with friends, I could work do whatever I wanted, which is an interesting concept for me because I've never had those reading days. The thing is, if you fail something, in Canada, it's super easy. You fail, you pay. In some programs, you cannot even fail one subject, let's say medical programs. If you fail one, one subject, you're gonna be expelled. So if you wanna study medicine in Canada, be extra careful with that stuff. A very important note, if you get expelled, you go home because your study permit is no longer valid. So please pay attention to that and don't fail any classes, please. Colleges in Canada are mostly focused on teamwork, prepare to spend a lot of time with other people, working together, collaborate with people, you network. All right, and for evaluation and grades, how do I know I'm doing well and how am I evaluated? As for evaluation, Canada uses the GPA system with a maximum points of 4.3 and that amount is calculated based on the percentages that depend on the grades that you're given, such as A, B, C, D, E, or F. And how you're evaluated in class widely depends on the subject and the teacher that's teaching it. It can be a pass or fail class, so as long as you're at 51% you can pass it, or it can be a fully graded class. 
And the way you evaluate it can also be different. Some teachers prefer to give you a lot of assignments during a class, sometimes maybe every single week. Some professors give you projects to do in the group and it could be one or maybe two projects during the semester. And some just lean on exams. So you just have to learn, prepare and write an exam in the end of the class to get your grade. There are also minimum passing grades for every single class. And teachers usually give you some of the criteria for evaluation in the beginning of the semester so that you can know exactly what to expect and what to do to be successful. And if you end up failing a class, you can always retake that. You'll just have to pay some extra money. And if you fail a class three times, you can risk getting expelled. Same as universities, colleges also have exams, midterms, some kind of tests, but it always depends on the program. I took two programs. The first one was event management. The second was multimedia. And in my first program, I had all the stuff I mentioned before, all the tests, all the exams, everything. In my multimedia program, I had zero. I had projects, individual, group projects, but they were all basically self-paced. So in the beginning of the term, the teacher would be, here's the list of stuff you need to do, here's the criteria. But also they will give you a grading system so you can literally go and be like done, done, done and then get your A's. As for the attendance, attendance is kind of important but again it always depends on the program. In my event management program I think we could only miss two or three classes per term. In my multimedia program we had no attendance. Literally nobody cared. So. Again, check with your program, but I think in most of the programs you will have the attendance. What's more difficult, college or university? Studying at university generally is not difficult, but it could be time consuming. There's a lot of work that's expected to be done outside of class. There's also group projects and that always introduces a lot of unknowns because you never know what kind of group you end up working with. Plagiarism and cheating are very strictly controlled and prohibited at university. And if you're caught cheating, you can get expelled immediately. So don't do that. And as mentioned previously, for every single class, I do expect to spend at least six hours studying, doing assignments and preparing for your exams every single week. It's, it's very important to study on a weekly basis because if you fall behind in any single given week, it might be really hard for you to catch up because there's a lot of material that gets covered on a weekly basis. For the difficulty, I would say colleges and universities are pretty much the same. No cheating, no plagiarism, you can get expelled for that. As for the difficulty of the learning process, I wouldn't say it's that bad. You are expected to do a lot of self-studying, a lot of teamwork. If you are thinking that you're just gonna go to college, you know, attend the classes and that's it, well, I have bad news for you because you are not gonna succeed. So please be prepared for teamwork, for self-study. You come home from your classes and you study. You literally read books, do the assignments, maybe meet with your peers and do the assignments. As Anastasia mentioned, you get the access to your previous assignments, to your previous exams, this way you can study for your, let's say, final exams, because final exam most likely will be a collection of your assignments, midterms, tests, stuff like that, so you can easily access that online and then study it for the final exam. Again, if you follow all the guidelines, all the grading schemes, it's gonna be super easy because profs at colleges, they tell you what they are expecting from you. They'll be like, okay, you'll need to know this, that, 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 also, don't forget about that formula. Don't forget about that. So there are no surprises. What about extracurriculum activities? Teams, clubs, what can I do? And if you want to get involved outside of your classroom, there's a lot of student associations you can participate in. And those associations can depend on what your interests are. Some associations even get budgets from universities, which means that you can come up and run some interesting projects as part of that association. And outside of associations, there's different environmental campaigns or different projects you can participate in, or there's even case competitions that you can take part in, which will allow you to travel and defend the honor of your school in different disciplines, which is pretty cool. And generally getting involved outside class is a great way to enhance your social life, meet new people, make some connections, and hopefully set yourself up for finding a great job afterward. As for the extracurriculum, colleges have all the same stuff that universities have, but I feel like it's less options. So you would have a soccer club, you would have a basketball team, gyms maybe, but you will also find a lot of hobby clubs, religion clubs. You 
can find a lot of options on site. You can always go to international office, to students association and ask them, being like, guys, I really love yoga. I would love to practice some yoga. Maybe you know there are clubs or where can I find like-minded people? They will help you out, no worries at all. And what campus and facilities are available to me in between classes? Campuses at university can be really cool. Some of them are very old, like Harry Potter, and some are very brand new with high-tech uh, buildings and classrooms and stuff like that. And within those campuses, there's typically everything you need as a student. There's food, there's labs, there's health services, there's kitchens for you to make food, there's residences. There's one thing to keep in mind about universities is because the campus may be very widely spread out, you might want to account for the time that it would take for you to travel between one campus to another if you have classes in different campuses. So be careful when you select classes and the time of those classes. Unlike universities, colleges have smaller campuses because colleges have less students, which kind of makes sense. But you will find pretty much the same stuff on campus, which are labs, restaurants, gyms, healthcare services. Everything is on campus. You don't need to take like, you know, a half an hour bus to get somewhere. Everything is located within one block, two blocks, you will always find a residence on campus. So if you're thinking about living on campus, that's your option. Also, some campuses will have bars, playrooms. I went to Niagara College for a visit. They had a vineyard and a brewery because the students are studying wine and beer, which is amazing. I've never seen that stuff before you actually have everything on campus. Let's say you study in hospitality or culinary art. You will have a full dedicated kitchen on campus. The thing is, those foods that you make, they're gonna go to a store on campus and you can buy them for less. So let's say a meal costs like $10, it's gonna cost you like seven, eight bucks, which is amazing because these students can practice their skills and these students can eat for cheaper. And what's social life like? The social life in university really depends on how social you actually want to be. It's very easy to make friends. If you live in the dorms and residences, the community is very tight. There's lots of partying. and It's very easy to find a study group that you can study together with. And student associations is another way to make connections, have a social life and make friends. And lastly, if you don't want to do any of that, some classes have group projects which force you to be social with some of your classmates and that's just another way to, to socialize and meet new people. Social life in colleges, it is pretty much the same as in universities. As long as you have friends who study at universities, you're gonna be invited to all of the parties. Frosh week, football, soccer games, basketball games, just get a friend from a university. That way you can enjoy the student life at its fullest. And once I'm done with my degree, what career opportunities do I have? Your opportunities after graduation really depend on you and what you've done and how far you're willing to go. There are some co-op programs that offer you co-op opportunities, so you can get involved in that and you'll be switching between a semester of studying and a semester of working. There's also internships that you can opt into when you're not studying, for example, in the summer, and that will allow you to get some of the work experience before you even graduate. There are also career services on campus which will help you build your resume, prepare for your interview, and will give you some context of the companies that the university is partnered with. Generally, your opportunities after university it depends on you and depends on how much experience you've been able to collect and the people that you've met in your journey. University provides some basic support, but don't count way too much in university helping you get that job. Colleges and universities are kind of similar in this one. So colleges offer co-op semesters, meaning you can work for a full term. Some colleges offer paid internships, so you can actually work and get paid, which is amazing. Most of the internships are unpaid but still you get a lot of experience, which would be amazing for your future resume. Some programs like mine, I took event management, they require you to volunteer. So I had, I think 120 hours of volunteering, but I did more because I don't know, I got so excited about it. So some programs might require you to volunteer. Please don't hesitate because it's an amazing opportunity to meet people, to get free food and get experience. Profit, focus on networking, on building your soft skills. 
Don't forget about portfolio or maybe some works. So if you study in journalism, collect your articles. If you studied graphic design, you can put them in your portfolio. Focus on that and then you will succeed both in your studies and in your future job. There is a lot to evaluate and think about. I feel ya. Overall, there is no right or wrong option. Both university and college are viable options. It all depends on your level of education, what you want to learn and how you want to learn and whom you want to become. Either way, we can guarantee you that those studying years will be your best years of your life. You will make lifelong friendships, have lots of memorable experiences, and hopefully all this will open the doors for you and launch you into the career you envision for yourself. If you like planning ahead and preparing yourself for success, make sure to check out another video that Anastasia and Yulia made about 10 life hacks they wish they knew before they started studying in college and university. Make sure to check it out and let them know what life hacks they missed. And as usual, if you liked this video, please don't forget to gently tap that like button below and subscribe to this channel for more useful content like this. Bye for now, see you in the next one!